My name is Eva Shin. The year before the war started in 1938, I was 11 years old and living a quiet, harmonious life with my loving family. Our house stood on the edge of the Black Forest in Germsbach in southwestern Germany. Many times the whole family would sit very quietly and listen to classical music on the radio or to records. I also vividly remember the hours in the evening when we would make our own music. My brother played the violin, my father the recorder, and I struggled to do my best on the piano. And we filled the house with beautiful sounds. This peaceful picture would not last long because Hitler started to become powerful. He promised to restore Germany to its rightful place among the great nations. People who had lived peacefully together before now became distrusting, withdrawn, and kept their opinions to themselves. Those who opposed Hitler were branded enemies of the state and were never seen again. And then the Kristallnacht happened. The synagogue in our town was burned to the ground by some fanatics and the Nazis took a few Jews out of their houses and mistreated them. We had many Jewish friends and some Jewish classmates. They suddenly disappeared. But again, nobody talked. When I was 12 years old, Germany invaded Poland, the war broke out, and everything changed. Many nights we woke up to the wailing of sirens, ran down to our cellars, heard the droning of the bombers flying over us, listened to the sounds of the anti-aircraft guns, and sometimes to the sounds of the actual bombs falling. The sky, meanwhile, was red from the fires. We were terrified to hear from a friend who was in Dresden that in one night during the air raid, 35,000 people died. We students did not have a choice. We had to become members of the Hitler Youth. Wearing the uniforms, we had to go to meetings where we sang patriotic songs and listened to speakers. On the weekends, we were expected to participate in athletic activities. During certain songs at special meetings, we had to stand in attention and lift our arms in the Heil Hitler salute for 10 or even 15 minutes. Usually one of the kids fainted. When I was 17 in 1944, the year I would have graduated, we girls were drafted. We could not finish our education unless we served for a year in the Arbeitsdienst. This was a workforce which helped the farmers. I had to get used to sleeping in a barrack room with about 16 other girls, washing myself in sinks, standing on wooden blanks, and after working hard all day, never getting enough to eat. One afternoon, it was my turn to clean the toilets. I walked between the buildings and saw a formation of bombers fly toward the airport. Horrified, I wanted to run for cover, but then I just dropped to the ground. I still can hear the roaring of the engines and can see the actual bombs drop out of the planes. Lying there, barely breathing, I heard and felt it when the targets were hit. In April of 1945, we were finally allowed to leave the work camp to find our way home as best as we could. It was suggested that we should wear our uniforms over our civilian clothes, just in case that the war would be won after all. 
We walked mostly during the night where we were safe from being shot at by low-flying planes. Sometimes we got a lift from soldiers in trucks and jeeps, sometimes from farmers. Everything was chaos. We saw soldiers without leaders and families who lost their homes. Everybody was trying to go somewhere safe. I finally arrived exhausted in Esslingen at my two grand aunt's place, which was about halfway home. One day, I ventured out in the garden. I was enjoying the great view to the mountains when the alarm siren sounded. I ran towards the house, but did not make it in time. I was a moving target for the planes, so I dropped to the ground. Just a few feet from me, the shells went into the earth. My hands were dug in the grass, and the staccato sound of guns firing overhead was terribly loud. But I survived. I could not believe that I was spared. When I felt stronger, I went with the other people of Esslingen to the cave-like bunker nearby during the air raids to be safe. A day before the city was taken over by the American troops, the French came toward the town from the other side. There was a lot of artillery, grenades and shooting. I still feel the panic of running down many stairs and racing through the streets to the bunker. At one point, I helped a mother with several children and carried one of the little ones in my arms when not far from us a grenade exploded. I did not run anymore, I flew. It seemed that angels carried us to safety. We were so glad when the war was officially over. I was reunited with my dear mother and we could share our war experiences. For a long time she had not known whether we were still alive before she heard that my father and brother were prisoners of war. Even after the war had been over for two years, we still had not enough to eat. We still could not buy clothes or tools or books or anything. The ruins of houses bombed out were still everywhere. I decided then and there, wars are horrible. I don't ever want to go through another one. <laughs>